This cute little girl is Scarlet. Hello. I've spent the last year getting this girl happy and healthy, but throughout her rehab she has been plagued with a mysterious illness. She was only a few months old when I bought her from the horse auction. Her mother was not at the sale and I knew she would do better throughout her quarantine with a friend. As luck would have it, this super cute little Palomino pony ended up coming home with me too. He ended up being the perfect companion for Scarlett. He was friendly and brave and allowed Scarlett to complete her quarantine with minimal stress. After his quarantine was over, I found out that this pony was a lot more broke than I had initially thought so it was no problem finding him an excellent home. Scarlett finished her initial quarantine with flying colors. She showed no signs of illness and I thought I was in the clear. I had just begun handling her when her first issue popped up. One morning when I went to feed her, I noticed that she had pus coming down her forehead. Horses have a bunch of sinuses right there, so we figured it was just an infection. At this point, Scarlett was still very much a wild horse still, so she wasn't able to be handled. Here is a picture of the suture lines on a horse's skull, and we were thinking that the bacterial infection was draining from one of those suture lines. Strangles was also a possibility, which is a devastating disease to have in a horse this young. There were over 500 horses at the sale that day. It was very likely that Scarlett's mother had never been vaccinated, so she didn't receive the immunity necessary to fight off these infections. Another possibility that I spoke with the vet about was pneumonia. Foals are particularly susceptible to this disease and usually they need to be hospitalized, which was not an option in Scarlett's case. After weighing the pros and cons, we decided to treat it aggressively with antibiotics and try to reduce her stress load as much as possible. We wanted to give her tiny body the best chance of recovering from this mystery illness without complications, and after a course of antibiotics, she was looking a lot better. It wasn't very long after she finished her initial antibiotics that another abscess popped up. This one was on her fetlock. Young foals can get joint ill, which is a systemic bacterial infection that invades the bones and joint capsules. It could have also been from a previous injury, but since we don't have any history on this horse, we decided to treat her again with more antibiotics and the joint cleared up. It is not uncommon for foals like this to have reoccurring illnesses when they have been stressed so early in life. But after I started handling this girl again, I noticed she had developed an abscess or a seroma on her hind end. It could have also been a hematoma. These are commonly seen when a horse gets kicked by another horse. They can get quite large and usually need to be drained. In order to reduce her stress, we decided to wait and see if it resolved on its own, which it did. Throughout the winter, every lump and bump on her healed right up. The one on her ankle that used to look like this was clear. There wasn't even a mark on her. She started becoming much more curious now that she was finally healthy. I had started to breathe a little bit easier knowing that she was probably in the clear. When spring finally came around in Montana, I was super excited to get this girl finally halter broke. All of her downtime throughout the winter gave her the opportunity to just relax and become a horse and then when I started working with her, she really trusted me and was able to pick up everything I taught her extremely quickly. I started daydreaming about her future as a riding horse, but then during one of her regular grooming sessions, I noticed this area on her neck. The skin was kind of bumpy and there were a few divots and it just didn't look quite right. Due to her long winter hair and the fact that I didn't start grooming her until she was halter broke, I could have missed it. I thought it was probably a scar and then the same type of lumps showed up on the opposite side of her neck. I knew for a fact that she did not have these before and they came up quite recently. It was at this point that it hit me like a ton of bricks. The mysterious illness that I've been dealing with since I got her could be due to a genetic disease. After adding up all of her symptoms, she was exhibiting some signs of a devastating genetic disease seen in quarter horses. Horses with this disease usually present with hyperextensible skin, meaning that it is very stretchy. They can get seromas and hematomas and it is common for them to get ulcerations along their back, the sides of their neck, and the front of their joints. Anyone familiar with genetic diseases will know that this is HERDA, 
which stands for hereditary equine regional dermal asthenia. The skin is made up of several layers and in this disease, the collagen that binds it together does not behave normally. The collagen in normal skin can stretch and bounce back to its normal position, but in a herd of horse, this skin can either stretch and not bounce back or it can actually break. Most horses that have herda go unnoticed until the saddle breaking process when the pressure from the saddle can create lots of lesions along the horse's back. I am going to show a few pictures of horses that actually do have herda, so if you'd rather not see that, fast forward to 6 minutes and 30 seconds. Here are some photos of herda lesions which have started healing. In this one, the skin was stretched but did not break and ended up forming this weird ridge. And in this horse, the pressure was so severe that it caused the collagen to break and the skin actually peels right off the horse's body. This next horse was a horse that I saw in real life at an auction that I attended. Fortunately, this horse was purchased by a rescue that was attending the sale. After being in a pen with strange horses, the pressure from just the little bites that it got caused a bunch of new lesions to appear across this horse's back. He was humanely euthanized after the sale. Herda is an extremely painful condition, and even if you never ride the horse, they can get lesions from simply brushing. The thought that me grooming Scarlet was causing her any amount of pain led me to go ahead and pull some hairs and send them in to get the genetic test done. Herda was first discovered in 1971 and 95% of the horses are traced back to Poco Bueno. The veterinary genetics lab at UC Davis discovered the disease and you can have the test run there. It costs $100 and screens for five additional genetic diseases. I like to use animal genetics because they often have a 50% off coupon. Anyone that's been watching my channel for a while knows that I love to save money wherever I can. UC Davis and Animal Genetics are both reliable sources to have the test done. When I go shopping for horses at auction, if I find one that is registered, I always check to see if they've already had these genetic tests done. The American Quarter Horse Association allows anybody, even people without a membership, to look up free records. All you have to do is go to their website and follow the link for free records. From there, you can either input the horse's name or registration number and an email address where they send the report to. These are some examples of reports from horses that I pulled earlier this year. This one shows that it has only had one of the genetic tests done, which is kind of odd. And this is what it looks like when the horse has had the full six panel test done. Herda would definitely explain all of the mysterious illnesses that Scarlett has had over the past year. I had to wait a few weeks for the test to come back. And during that time, I thought of every possible outcome for this sweet little girl. It can be really devastating when you work on a horse for this long and it turns out that they have a severe genetic disease that cannot be cured. Horses living with her to have an extremely poor quality of life. When I finally checked my email and got the test back, I was over the moon to learn that Scarlett had tested negative for all six of the diseases. After receiving the test, a huge weight was lifted. I had been stewing over how hard it would be to make the decision to let one of my new favorite horses go, but in the end, that was a decision that I did not have to make. Scarlett still has the lumps on the right side of her neck, but the ones on the left side resolve themselves with an injection of steroids. The lumps on the right side of her neck are probably due to a stallion or another horse biting her and tossing her around out on the range while she was trying to survive. It is crazy to think of all of the individual things that she had to overcome to get to this point. I'm happy they ended up just being a series of unfortunate events and not something more dire. Every horse I pick up from an auction has an unknown history. Some of them take a little bit more work to get back to normal, but in the end, all of them are worth it. Now that this girl is finally on the mend, I am really excited to share more of her journey with you guys. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.